The Commanders have generated the fifth most adjusted yards before contact per attempt, and they face a Cowboy defense giving up the third most. In addition, 55% of his rushing attempts have come on man and gap concepts, and the Cowboys have allowed the second highest success rate on those concepts. The guy put up 16 carries for 63 yards last week against one of the toughest run defenses in the league right now in Philadelphia, so I think he'll do it here. Week 12, and we do have a best bet at the end of the program, and a little bit of a struggle bus on these damn picks here the last three, four weeks. Now, we are still over 500, uh, well over, but it, it's been like pulling teeth over here. So I do have some very good picks here that I love, and hopefully it works out. Uh, but these are good picks. They may not win, but they're good. Uh, we'll start with DeAndre Hopkins, and I, I love this number. Uh, 43.5. I mean, come on. This is doable. Uh, the Panthers allowing the ninth most receiving yards per game and the fourth most touchdowns to outside receivers. And here's the key. Very simple. They play a lot of zone, top seven clip, and you want zone for D-hop. You don't want them against man-heavy defenses. They'll be all over them like a blanket. Uh, they play a lot of cover three, and Hopkins averages a very robust 0.56 fantasy points per route run against cover three, which would rank, I even went and I looked, that would rank 15th best out of 100 wide receivers playing this week on the board, basically. So 44 yards, dude, let's go. I mean, I think it's going to be one of those games where they come out and they hit him early and he has like two, three grabs on the first drive and then we're, we're almost home right there. So we'll do it. And we'll also go to big... Mike Evans, and this number might might be going up soon. Uh, I believe it went up just from a couple of days ago when it was at like 51, but he's cleared to go, and he's going to play. The Giants have been a deep funnel. They've allowed the eighth most receiving yards per game on throws traveling 20-plus yards downfield. They have run single high looks at the league's fourth highest rate and at least 53% of the time in eight of their 10 games. And since the start of last season, Mike Evans sees a 36% boost to his targets per route run and a 56% boost to his yards per route run against single high. Correspondingly, by the way, Cade Otten is rotten against single high. He sees a 24% reduction. So I do think that works out for Big Mike. He'll see a lot of Deontay Banks. Uh, who allows a very generous 0. .42 fantasy points per route run. Moving on to another running back, we're going to try him out again. It's The running backs are getting it done, but not necessarily for yours truly, but I love this one. And this one has been bet up, but it's still good. Brian Robinson Jr., over 72.5. And, and, and here's all the points. So forget about whether or not it hits or not. It's a good play. The Commanders are 10.5-point favorites. And in his career, B-Rob averages 66 rushing yards in wins, which is a 33% boost than he averages in losses. Dallas is a top-four run funnel with a negative 3.2% pass rate over expectation allowed. They won't have to do much in terms of the forward pass uh, against Dallas. Uh, so I think he's looking at serious volume. And, I mean, we're still going with positives here. The Commanders have generated the fifth most adjusted yards before contact per attempt, and they face a Cowboy defense giving up the third most. In addition, 55% of his rushing attempts have come on man and gap concepts, and the Cowboys have allowed the second highest success rate on those concepts. The guy put up 16 carries for 63 yards last week against one of the toughest run defenses in the league right now in Philadelphia, so I think he'll do it here. Speaking of Philadelphia, that's where A.J. Brown plays football, and this number is probably going up soon too, 75.5, because skinny Batman didn't practice today, and the Rams have been a perimeter funnel all year long. They allow the sixth most receiving yards per game and the second most yards per route run to outside receivers over the last five weeks. And, of course, Brown leads the Eagles in target share by almost 10%. He also averages 3.56 yards per route run, which is first 
in the National Football League. And the Rams, they are giving up. I said they were a perimeter funnel. They were giving it. They are giving up the 71 percent completion rate, uh, six worse, and a 131 passer rating, and the ninth most yards to outside receivers, which is where AJ Brown lines up. I have another running back next up on the list. Feel very good about this. Hopefully, Sean Tucker doesn't get involved in the Tampa Bay Buccaneer backfield. But I wasn't into bucking Irving as a prospect this summer. I thought he was a little too small. But, hey, incorrect. Once I saw him, I'm like, hey, okay, this guy's good. Uh, 52.5 rushing yards. The Giants have allowed the sixth most schedule-adjusted fantasy points per game to opposing running backs and the most to opposing runners over the last five weeks, they face the Giants defense, giving up the seventh most uh, and uh, 54% of his rushing attempts. Once again, the man gap stuff, 54% of his rushing attempts have come on man and gap concepts. That's 13th most against which the Giants have allowed the fifth most yards per carry against man and gap concepts and 5.2 yards per carry. Now, Rashad White, is actually averaging only 2.1 yards per carry on those concepts. So I don't think Rashad White is going to do anything because I don't think they'll need him to catch the ball either. Uh, the Giants just got crushed by Chuba Hubbard, by the way, in their last game. 28 carries for a buck 53 and a tutty. So I think Bucky will uh, be in good shape. And Tyreek Hill is on my list. If you saw Scott Barrett just uh, 10 minutes ago talking about this, 63.5. The Patriots run man coverage at the league's third highest rate. And even in a down year, Tyreek sees a 30% boost to his targets per route run. He leads the Dolphins with a 25% target share against man this year. And since the start of last year, he has a 3.89 yard per route run number against man coverage. That ranks second best among all wide receivers. Tyreek hasn't cleared 80 yards since week one, but as long as we get to 64, we're good. He'll get shadow treatment, I think, by Christian Gonzalez. So there is a little downside, but Gonzalez has not been a shutdown corner per se. Hill got six for 69, by the way, on 10 targets with Tyler Huntley at quarterback in this matchup in week five. So I think we're going to get to 64. James Conner is next up on my list here little bit of a bigger number here, 67.5, but Seattle gives up the third most rushing yards per game. The Cardinals have generated the fourth most adjusted yards before contact, while the Seahawks have allowed the fifth most. So a good matchup in the running game and a good schematic matchup as well. They have allowed the second most yards per carry in the third highest success rate on opposing man or gap concepts and 72% of James Conner's rushing attempts have come on man and gap concepts. That is the most in the National Football League. Here's another one. We're going to go uh, with some lower end guys here at the bottom of the list, but I like it. Dalton Schultz. I know it's weird, but 26.5 receiving yards. It, they run zone to the Titans at the league's fifth highest rate. Dalton Schultz sees a 63% boost to his yards per route run and a 100% boost to his fantasy points per route run against zone coverage. And then last but not least, Theo Johnson, 21.5. The Bucs have been shredded by tight ends, giving up the fifth most schedule adjusted fantasy points per game. They're an underneath funnel, allowing the most receiving yards on throws traveling 10 yards or fewer downfield. They have given up all kinds of production. They run zone at the league's highest rate, and Theo Johnson gets 156% boost to his yards per route run and a 128% boost to his fantasy points per route run against zone. I think he'll get plenty of looks from Tom Cutlets this week. And it is time for the best bet. And it is brought to you 
by GBank, the official bank of Visa. The GBank Visa signature card, your best bet, delivering 1% cashback rewards on eligible gaming transactions, 2% cashback rewards on all other eligible purchases. For more information, head to VEASAN.com slash GBank. That's V-S-I-N dot com slash GBank. Subject to credit approval, terms and conditions apply. The play of the week is Trey McBride over 54.5. He runs 50% of his routes in line, and Seattle's been one of the worst teams against inline tight ends over the last five weeks, and they've also been an underneath funnel as well. So Trey McBride will get it done here and go over. Thanks for watching, but don't let the betting insights end here. If you want an extra edge this football season, you can get a month of VEASAN Pro right now absolutely free. That means access to our betting insights, analysis, and tools like our betting splits at zero cost to you. Click the link in the description to sign up.